Hello, I'm Shabana Desaid, and today I will be discussing about endometrioma and subfertility. This is also a very important topic from examination point of view. And uh, there was a scenario in the exam that was a simulated patient task where there was this lady, uh, she was 34 years old, and uh, she had been diagnosed with endometrioma. She and her partner are now planning for pregnancy. And the investigations were done, and she was referred by her GP, uh, and you had to discuss the options available for her. All her investigations were normal, ovarian reserve tests, hysterosalpingogram, tubal patency tests, they were normal. And partner semen analysis was also normal. And uh, ultrasound was done, which showed left ovarian endometrioma, which was about five centimeter. So that was quite large in size. And <clears throat> right ovary, right tube, left tube, and womb appeared normal. So how are you going to discuss the further options available for her? So in her case, we can give her a mini agenda. Um, we can tell her about the conservative management, medical and surgical management. So conservative management, uh, like just wait and watch, is not going to be helpful for her because uh, the cyst is quite large and uh, there are chances that the cyst can further increase in size. This can lead to cyst accidents, like uh, she can have bleeding, torch, there is risk of torsion and rupture of the cyst. Regarding the medical management, we can offer her medications in the form of hormonal tablets or injections, but again, this will not be helpful because these are mainly contraceptives. They will prevent ovulation. That is, they will stop the release of eggs from ovaries. So we can offer her the surgical management and tell her the benefits and the risks. So the benefit uh, is that this will help to remove the cyst and also the scar tissue in tummy and pelvis. Then we need to tell about the details of the surgery, that how it will be done, who will be doing it, and the pros and the cons. So this will be the keyhole surgery done by the expert keyhole surgeon under general anesthesia. Surgery has to be done very meticulously in order to avoid any damage to ovarian tissue. What are the benefits? Of course, this will help to remove the cyst. After the removal of cyst, the pain will improve, the symptom will improve, and also the chance of having a baby will improve. We also need to tell her that like any other surgery, there is risk of surgery and anesthesia. There is risk of pain and infection. There is risk of damage to the adjacent structures like bowel, bladder, and blood vessel. But every uh, precaution will be taken to decrease these risks. One important risk which we need to tell this patient as she has uh, endometrioma, that is chocolate cyst of ovary, and she is contemplating pregnancy. So we need to tell her about the risk of damage to ovarian tissue and decrease in ovarian reserve. And explain to her what this means. Now, decrease in ovarian reserve means that there is risk of decrease in the number and quality of eggs. So we can also counsel her that before the surgery, uh, like we need, we can tell her and offer her about the like the egg preservation, that is the oocyte cryopreservation. Why? Because during the surgery, as there is risk of ovarian tissue damage and decrease in ovarian reserve, so we can refer you to the fertility specialist where you uh, can discuss about egg preservation. In this, you will be given some medications. This will help to stimulate the ovaries. Ovaries will release eggs. They will be collected and preserved. And these eggs can be used for IVF or test your baby later on. Tell her also about the risk of OHSs in uh, egg preservation. Because when we are talking about any procedure, we need to tell the benefits and the risk. When you're telling the risk to the patient, it, it comes in the patient safety. So the risk of OHSs, tell her in the, in the layman language, in very simple uh, terms, that uh, we will be offering you some medications and injections. This can overstimulate the ovaries, and ovaries can become uh, hyper-responsive. 
there can be release of more eggs. This can increase the size of the ovary. You can have tummy pain. And also there can be buildup of fluid in your tummy or around your heart and chest. We call this condition as ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome in medical terms. It can be mild, moderate, or severe. And, uh, and however, the treatment is available for this condition as well. What about the post-surgery plan? So when keyhole surgery is done and the endometrioma is removed, then there are two possibilities. One is that if surgery goes on well, there is no ovarian tissue damage, then tell her that you can have or you can try for natural pregnancy for six months. If you don't get pregnant in those six months, then we can offer you a referral to the fertility specialist and you can have a test to baby. Second possibility is that if surgery did not go well, there was ovarian tissue damage. In that case, we would offer you referral to the fertility specialist directly and you can have IVF uh, and test to baby. Now, after the surgery, there is also risk of recurrence that uh, the cyst can come back again. So if cyst comes back again, then repeat surgery is not indicated. Why? Because there is risk of complications and risk of more damage to ovarian tissue. And cumulative pregnancy rate is very less. It is only 25%. So it is recommended to have IVF after the primary surgery. In this, the cumulative pregnancy rate is about 75%. So after counseling the patient, we need to always ask her, am I clear so far? Do you have any questions? Then close the station with the plan and follow-up. Give her the patient formation leaflet, write back to the GP, arrange appointment with the fertility consultant in two weeks' time. If she's very upset, you can offer her appointment with the counselors as well. Give her the support group number and contact numbers for clinical access. If she has come alone, then you can always tell her that you can come with your partner next time and we would be happy to see you both together. So for this scenario, we will follow this flow chart. Endometrioma and wishes to conceive now. So the patient, now you have to see for how long she and her partner have, have been trying. So if she is already trying to conceive for six months or more, then we will be following this flow chart. Tests will be ovarian reserve test, semen analysis for the male partner. And of course, the tubal patency tests um, has to be done. Now we will see the age. So our patient's age, she was 34 years old. So we are going to follow this flow chart, offer her the surgery first, poor anatomical result straight away. We can offer her IVF or ICSI. And if good anatomical result, then we can tell her to try for natural pregnancy for six months. If she gets pregnant, that's well and good. If she's not able to conceive, then again, we will refer her to the fertility specialist for IVF. If she's an elderly patient, age is more than 35 years, then there is, and other, uh, we have to see these, uh, like what are the other criteria? And then in this case, we are not going to offer her surgery. We will be offering her IVF straightforward, straight away, and uh, like, Elderly patients refer to the fertility specialist for IVF. And this is just a summary how we are going to manage the patient with endometrioma uh, who wish to preserve their fertility. So we need to consider the fertility factors, her age, the results of ovarian uh, reserve tests, semen analysis results, how about the tubes, whether there is any hydrosalpings or radiations, any previous endometrioma surgery. Consider urgent need for surgery if there is any pain or any suspicion of malignancy. And consider IVF as an alternative to surgery, particularly in elderly females who are more than 35 years of age. Prior to surgery, we need to consider oocyte cryopreservation. Why? Because during the surgery, there is risk of ovarian tissue damage. And this can also decrease the ovarian reserve. 
and surgery has to be done meticulously so that there is mit minimal damage to the normal ovarian tissue. And we and if after the surgery there is recurrence of the endometrioma, then repeat surgeries are avoided because with repeat surgeries, as we know, there is again increased risk of complications, risk of damage to the ovarian tissue and risk of decrease in the ovarian cell. So I hope this was helpful. And when you are, if you get any scenario in the exam regarding endometrioma and fertility, follow this chart, all right? So this flow chart is really, really, very helpful. And uh, of course, you need to remember these points as well. I hope that was helpful and uh, all the best for your exams. Keep studying and keep practicing. Thank you.